Are the 49ers frauds? Well, maybe. Here are the highlights. Quick throw, and this is a fight for the ball. Charvarius Ward and Jordan Addison. Cousins, end zone, Addison, touchdown. Purdy is able to get through trouble and get to the edge. What a good run by Brock Purdy. Not on the same page with the two of them. Here's another guy trying to bounce back. Jake Moody has missed nope. again. We are try now by Joseph. And it's a 10-0 game. Second and goal, McCaffrey again, and he's in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Blitz off the edge. Cousins throws, oh, hey. and it's taken away by Addison for the touchdown. He and Charvarius Ward. Analytics says go for this up to five yards. But on fourth and goal, they game this season. That was at home against Dallas. Here's McCaffrey. He's gone. Touchdown, 49ers. Joseph. He's got to be low. Can he hit it? He got it. <laughs> Originated with Shanahan. Purdy down the middle. And intercepted by Bynum. Good snap, good hold. The kick is nope. no good. Birdie steps through, floats it, he's picked, and that's it. Bynum gets another. But right to him. Upset 22-17 win over the Niners. Of course, the Niners' second straight loss for the first time since la early last year, which I guess isn't saying too much because there are teams that haven't lost back to that game. But either way, yeah, the Niners. The Niners, of course, um, yeah, this is just not very good. Um, this is a game they should have won, and they, I mean, honestly, they probably even shouldn't have won because the, the Vikings out thoroughly outplayed them. Uh, obviously, 2017 was the final score. Uh, it could have been worse, uh, and it could have been better for the Niners, obviously. But the Vikings went back-to-back -back games. They might have something to say now because they're 3-4. They're playing the Packers next week. We'll have to wait and see what they do because they – I wouldn't say they were shot maybe at the division, but that – like, with what happened with the, them and the – what is it called? Packers um, – Lions. Is, if they beat the Packers next week and maybe the Lions lose like, um, against the Raiders on Monday night, I'm saying probably not that going to happen. But if it does, might, 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 might have some words there. Either way, though, uh, Brock Purdy, 21 of 30, 272 touchdown, two picks. Um, he was just not very good in those last two drives. Cam Bynum, we'll get to him in a minute, but yeah, he played really well, too. Obviously, though, uh, he did struggle at some points. Again, over the middle, like, they just didn't really give him any of those. Like, the Saints were just sitting there. And as well, you could see the fact there wasn't really a dynamic on that offensive line that looked good at all. Like, they, they got absolutely mauled most of the game. And partly, CMC just didn't have his, like, best game, per se, either. He had a bad fumble as well. So, yeah, Brock Purdy, it was not a great game overall. But I will say this, I liked a lot of the ways he adjusted towards the end of the game. Getting two picks were really bad, but... Again, before that last drive, he looked really good. Again, CMC I already talked about the, the running game, which is not there in this one. Uh, the offensive line really struggled with penetration and sustaining really any blocks. So you could definitely put that on Trent Williams not being in the game, but I'm not going to give him any excuses. This run game was not um, put in any place to succeed at otherwise, though. Like, Kyle Hannett, Shanahan's um, play calling in this one was not good. Stats-wise, though, George Kittle had a couple big plays. Of course, yeah, I'm in light of national tight end today. Uh, Brandon Ayuk, though, 5 to 7 was pretty productive. But outside of that, again, a couple guys had some big plays. Of course, Chris McCaffrey with 35 yard touchdown um, on the screen. But no one actually played particularly great outside of maybe George Kittle had a pretty good game. Defensively, they got, again, they just got kind of got beat a lot. Like, up front, they actually weren't that good at all. Like, it, it was kind of surprising. The linebackers kind of kept this, um, and even Tolunu Funga, actually kind of kept this defense in the game at points in this one, in terms of, like, the, the tackles they made. But the defense line did not show up at all. They got actually mauled. I wouldn't say mauled, but they did They did struggle. Javon Hargrave did not play well at all. Traverius Ward got, um, of course, he got beat on, on, on two of those touchdowns. But he did have an interception early in the game. 
Secondary didn't play particularly well. Great. Their coverage was not great. Uh, that's again, they didn't get too much pressure either. It was not a good game. Again, the linebackers kind of seemed like Fred Warner was good, but like, uh, like outside of that, I really didn't see any guys do playing that one coverage. Like, TJ Gibson Sr. was not doing a good job covering over the top. Obviously, that one touchdown. And of course, Jake Moody did miss one field goal as well. Vikings wise, Kirk Cousins was money. 183 and I think two touchdowns on third down. You get crazy there. 378 yards back to what we were seeing early in the season. The running game, again, wasn't particularly like a big part of their game, but when they did, when they called on it, it was really good. Jake Maker's not a great yard from carry, but. Some was kind of back, um, just kind of like wasted carries, but he actually had a pretty decent game. But the only thing I'll say is that they did struggle to run the ball in the red zone. Uh, Jordan Addison, though, again, career game coming out party, 7 for 123, two touchdowns. He was making all the plays we were asking to, big time. TJ Hawkinson, very, um, um, what is it called, heavily used, but he was pretty good, 11 for 86. Randy Powell also had a couple of big plays. KJ Osborne was pretty productive, too. I think a lot about his stuff in this offense. Like, there, there was really nothing on the plan about it. Again, they, again, the fact they didn't run the ball too well in the red zone, they're even off, um, Offensive line didn't exactly set the edge most of the game. Probably only two things I'd say, but they, they had a really good game. Defensively, though, of course, Cam Bynum with the two picks, seven tackles. Best get, by far the best performance I've seen from him. Again, not just because of the two interceptions, but also the fact that he did not make one bad play the whole game. Cam Bynum was amazing. Honestly, I wouldn't be, I, he probably should win defensive rookie, um, player of the week. Um, Jordan Hicks had four tackles, as well as by, um, Byron Murphy and Caleb Evans. Their secondary play was pretty good. I won't say they're on complete lockdown, but they did a pretty good job. The pressure was also there. Daniel Hunter, yeah, with the only stack, but they did get some pretty good pressure. Uh, and honestly, the run fits weren't particularly that great. It's just right, again, the Harrison Phillips, um, DJ Wan were really good. John Blar also really good at penetrating and, um, um, what is it called, shedding some of those blocks up front. Of course, Ray Joseph did miss one of those field goals, but he was good outside of that. Again, they had 400 the yards. They outplayed the Niners in every way, like, like last week, again, I wouldn't say the Niners, like, particularly they played well at all last um, week against the Browns, but you could argue they should have won that game. This week, though, the Vikings outplayed them. They were definitely the better team in this one. They had, again, 3-1 to one turnover ratio, big difference. Well, they had the ball longer. They outgained them. They were better on third down. Did not really hear, but they, they were actually better on third down. And also the fact, again, they just simply made more plays, and also the fact on third down. I just, yeah, the um, Vikings were really good there. All right, what I want to see from this 49ers offense was 20, um, 20 plus rushing attempts in the first half. I only think they got to like 12. It was not a good running game in that first half. The second half got a little better, but still. Brock has to show, be able to hit the outside numbers early and often. He had a couple of the throws there, but it was like he wasn't like trying to throw there. It was not great there. And Brandon Ayuk did get a couple of targets, obviously, but offensively, they just, uh, up front, they just didn't look good enough. And obviously, Brock made some mistakes at the end of the game. So, for, and again, and early in the game, too. So, overall, offensively, I have to give him three minuses, but I honestly, four minuses, actually, but. It was just there wasn't enough energy. That's all. But like this Niners offense, when they're getting really getting going, it's when they have a ton of energy. And when they have that, it's really hard to stop them. But they didn't have it in this game. And again, I like the way they adjusted. But again, just the end, of, the end of the game was not there. Defensively, six plus tackles for loss. I think they had three. Play a lot. A mofo on third and. <laughs> They did, but Jason Gibson was not making the um the reads he was supposed to. He had a really tough time at, at some points. Obviously, Kirk was really good pre-snap too. So um yeah, that was a really tough game for the. Uh, I wouldn't say tough game, but their defense got outplayed. Obviously, they just didn't get uh, their pressure was just not there. Kind of dead pass rush. It it was an ugly game up front for them. But obviously, their secondary at least stepped up at some points towards the end of the game. But at the start of it, it was not great. So. I'm going to be honest, I'd give them five minuses. That Niners defense is not a good game. Now let's look at the Vikings. And obviously for, that, for them, they did come on the right side of another one-score game. Every game they played has been a one-score game this year. Obviously, offensively, they didn't have 170 yards, yards, but they had a good amount of it. I mean, maybe I don't think they had 100, but whatever. They, it, it, it was productive. TJ uh, Hawkinson being more efficient, um, effective as a downfield blocker. He was pretty effective there. Jordan Addison, huge game, obviously. Brian O'Neill was really good as well. I won't say Pancake Nick Bosa, but he had a couple nice blocks on him. Def um, offensively... There's nothing bad, bad to say about him. Yeah, they only scored 22 points. They really scored 25. Yeah, and outside of, again, the red zone crap, I, you can't really say anything bad. Again, they, they have one up front. Their wide receivers got open. Kirk made a lot of nice throws. Outside, again, they could not run the ball in the red zone. It's really the only thing I had to say. Defensively, though, Daniel Hunter's number pressure. He had, like, five or six. Brian Murphy Jr. was good. I won't say he was as great as this. I think he had gave a couple too many completions, but that was about it. They gave up maybe, like, like two big plays. That was about it. And have Jordan Hicks play well, he did. He, he made it really hard for them to move the ball. Uh, defensively, I obviously can't buy them as the player of the game, by far. So, for that reason, I'll give them four pluses. Yeah, they had a good game. I think it was more the um, Niners offense, but yeah, I do think they had a good game. Obviously, they're playing the Packers next week. Huge game for them. Honestly, I would say it was make or break of the season, but it's pretty darn close. They're looking to, again, get back, um, get closer in the division. We'll see what happens, though. That's all we have for the Vikings, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the Monday Night Football recap. See you for the Power Rankings tomorrow. Left field and gone! Adolis Garcia makes his statement, and the Rangers have their sights set on Game 7.